Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on how to perform an ANOVA using Microsoft Excel. So I have here an Excel workbook and I'm on a particular worksheet, one that I've uh, named ANOVA. And I'm going to demonstrate um, how to run an ANOVA using some data that I generated, fictitious data. This is Excel 2010 that I'm using. And in order to run some of the more advanced statistics, you have to activate an add-in. So I'm going to show you how to activate that add-in first. Then we'll take a look at the research design and the data, and I'll perform the ANOVA. So first of all, when you go to the data ribbon, which I, which I have open up, up here, the data ribbon, uh, if you do not see toward the right uh, data analysis, then you need to activate that in under the file menu item. So you'll select file, go to options, go to add-ins, select analysis tool pack and make sure the manage uh, this drop-down box is set to Excel add-ins. Hit go, uh, select analysis tool pack and hit OK. And you can see the data analysis menu item is now available in the data ribbon. So let's take a look now at the data. So in this first worksheet, uh, in the green, we're going to assume that this data is from an assessment that measures overall functioning and it's been converted to a T-score, which means it has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. And this particular assessment, a low score, indicates a higher level of functioning whereas a high score indicates a lower level of functioning. So one way to think about it would be perhaps this assessment looks at the duration, frequency, and severity of certain symptoms that get in the way of functioning. That's what it, that's what it measures. So a higher score would indicate lower functioning. And let's say that uh, in this instance, participants uh, went to one of three groups. They're randomly assigned to one of three group therapy sessions designed to look at, to focus on different issues. One is substance use, one is depression, and one is trauma. And what you want to see from a research standpoint is, is there a difference in the overall functioning between these three groups, between substance use, depression, and trauma. So depending on the nature of your study, you may believe, for instance, that focusing on the substance use would probably yield a lower score on the functioning, meaning increased functioning, or the depression or the trauma, depending on, again, what your hypothesis, what your research question is, and what your hypothesis is. So let's, let's run an ANOVA using this data. So we want to go over to the data analysis menu selection and open up analysis tools. And you can see there's several different statistics available in Excel using this add-in. We're going to go to ANOVA single factor, single factor, and hit OK. It's going to ask us for an input range. Now, that input range is the entire area I have here on the left. This is grouped by columns. The labels are in the first row. As you can see, it was uh, substance use, depression, and trauma. We're going to leave the alpha at the default, which is 0 0.05 or 5%. And we're going to move the output range to cell F3. Oh, I just overwrote it. All right. so. This is the input range, 
output range. Now select F3. This should. There we go. So we have A1 to C31 is the uh, input range. F3 is the output range. Go ahead, OK. And this is the. Uh, these are the results of the ANOVA. So we'll take a look. So first you have, it tells you what statistic that you performed, okay, and that was an ANOVA single factor. It gives you a summary, and you can see that the groups are of equal size, 30 participants in each group. And it gives you here the average score on that overall functioning uh, for each group. So initially here we can see that the average score for substance use was lower than depression and depression was lower than trauma. So what you want to know from the reason you'd run ANOVA is to determine if there is a significant significant difference, statistically significant difference between the groups. So we look, then we go down to the NOVA results, we look here between groups, and we see the p-value is 0 0.014. So it's about 1.4 percent. So since we set the alpha at 0 0.05, which is 5 percent, we would reject the null hypothesis in this case. So the null hypothesis would state that there's no difference between the groups, but since we have a p-value below our alpha value, we're going to assume that there is a statistically, well, we know there's a statistically significant difference between the groups, <coughs> but we're going we're to um, reject the null hypothesis and say there is a difference between the groups, and that that difference was not um, created or, or did not result by random error. We know there's only a 1.4 percent chance that it was through random error alone. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis and we are going to assume uh, there is a uh, difference between the groups that was not caused by random error. So that's how you uh, perform a, uh, an ANOVA for this, this type of data arrangement and interpret the results. So now I've moved to the next worksheet and I'm going to show you how to run an ANOVA for this set of data and you'll see that this set of data uh, looks very similar to the uh, data that was used in the last ANOVA except now I have an ID number for each participant all right, there's an ID number available, and this is meaningful. So this would be, uh, instead of a uh, ANOVA single factor, uh, as it's called in Excel, this would be an ANOVA without replication. So we go to the data uh, ribbon again, select data analysis, and now you can see there's ANOVA single factor, ANOVA two factor with replication and ANOVA two-factor without replication. This is the one we want, ANOVA two-factor without replication. We hit OK and we're going to set the input range again as the entire area here to the left. We do have labels. We'll keep the alpha at 0 0.05 and we'll set the output range uh, again at F3. We hit OK and you can see this looks very different all right, this has the averages for each participant in the study. Each participant in the study, uh, the averages are over here. So there's valuable information uh, looking at these individual scores, but we want to look, and of course we can look at the average for, um, for all th three groups. But we want to look down at the results of the ANOVA so we can see that it gives us a uh, different type of data now, a different type of result. You have rows and columns. So rows were the individual participants, 1 through 30. It can, we can see here from the p-value, uh, 78%, 0.78, 
that we would have to accept the null hypothesis. There's no uh, statistically significant difference uh, by row, by the individual participants. Columns, I'll, I'll go back over here and show you. Remember these columns were substance use, depression, and trauma. Right? So by columns, we have 2.1%, 0 0.021. That is statistically significant. So there's a statistically significant difference between these three types of group, substance use, depression, and trauma-focused groups. But there's not a statistically significant difference between the subjects or within the subjects, okay? Uh, in this case, indicated by rows. So no within subjects, no statistically significant difference for within subjects, but between the groups, there is a statistically significant difference. So again, in Excel, this is called an ANOVA two-factor without replication. So now let's take a look at a different research design. You can see I have the same group, substance use, depression, and trauma. And now instead of an ID number, I have duration. So this is, uh, you have six week duration and a 12 week duration. All right, and that's one independent variable, duration. And then the second independent variable is the emphasis of the group, how, you know, what the group is focused on. And you have the substance use, depression, and trauma. So that's three levels of that independent variable. So we have two levels of duration. Six week is one level, 12 week is another. And we have three levels of the emphasis of the group. So this is a uh, this can be handled uh, by a no by an ANOVA, and Excel is capable of calculating this ANOVA. Again, we go to data, data analysis. This would be uh, an ANOVA two-factor with replication. ANOVA two-factor with replication. Hit OK. Again, we want the entire range selected. Rows per sample. All right, so this is a little different than the um, ANOVA two-factor without replication. We know that um, there are 15 rows for the six week and 15 for the 12 week. So we're going to set the rows per sample at 15. We're going to leave the alpha at 0 0.05, change the output range to F3. Hit OK. And you can see now uh, the data looks different than in the uh, prior two ANOVAs that were performed. We have a summary for six week. All right, and all these different scores. And this, this one being probably of the most interest. And then we have a summary for the 12 week. Again, this is probably of the most interest here. And we have a total. And then we have the ANOVA, the results of the ANOVA down here. So you can see now the uh, Specifiers have changed again. So we have sample. So what sample means here is the independent variable that's in the first column. Okay, so sample would be the duration. And you can see the p value is 0 0.011. So there is a significant difference, statistically significant difference, between the six week results and the 12 week results. Now columns refers to these three columns, the substance use, depression, and trauma. And you can see that that is also statistically significant. 0 0.0037 and the alpha set at 0 0.05. So there's a statistically significant difference between substance use 
depression and trauma focused uh, groups. And then we have um, another uh, specifier that was not uh, in the results of the prior to ANOVA's interaction. So this is what this is uh, indicating to us is the, the level of interaction effect uh, between these two independent variables. So the, uh, this, this value represents a uh, main effect, right? So a statistically significant result for the uh, duration, statistically significant result for the uh, focus of the group. So these are main effects. And this looks at interaction effect. And you can see 0.85 or 85% that is not statistically significant. We would accept the null hypothesis. So this an, this ANOVA, what it can what it can find, and of course it didn't find it here, is it can find, depending on the data, that there's an interaction effect, a statistically st significant interaction effect uh, between two independent variables, which can be uh, extremely useful in research. So this is actually a fairly powerful statistic. So this is how you would perform and interpret uh, an ANOVA two-factor with replication.